Welcome back to another captivating episode of Gathering More Leaves, the podcast where we unearth the forgotten stories and unsung heroes from the pages of history. I'm your host, David M. DeBacker, and today, we're delving deep into the annals of American history to unravel a tale that has long been shrouded in mystery and legend, the extraordinary story of John McMullen, the tailor who, according to legend, sewed General George Washington's uniform during the Revolutionary War. The legend of John McMullen has been whispered through the ages, passed down from generation to generation like a treasured heirloom. But was John McMullen truly the humble tailor who played a pivotal role in shaping the destiny of a nation? Or is this just another fable spun from the threads of history? In this episode, we'll embark on a journey back in time to explore the life and times of John McMullen, a man whose needle and thread might have stitched together the very fabric of American independence. We'll sift through the dusty records, consult with historians, and listen to the voices of those who have kept this legend alive. So, sit back, dear listeners, as we unravel the threads of history and try to separate fact from fiction in the enthralling legend of John McMullen. Join us as we embark on a quest to discover the truth behind this remarkable tale of bravery, patriotism, and the enduring power of storytelling. Joel Chandler Harris, author of Uncle Remus and Br'er Rabbit fame, wrote in his Stories of Georgia, 1898, The Revolutionary War in Georgia developed some very romantic figures, which are known to us rather by tradition than by recorded history. This recalls one of my ancestors who is associated with a tradition surrounding his occupation during the American Revolutionary War. I was introduced to this family legend about 20 years ago as I was just learning about the family tree of my maternal grandfather. My third great-grandmother, Elizabeth McMullen, wife of David Dobbs, was a granddaughter of John McMullen, McMullen, a wealthy rice planter who lived in Elbert County, Georgia in the early part of the 19th century. According to the legend, John McMullen was born in Dublin, Ireland around 1740. Other versions of the story have him coming from someplace else in Ireland. It is said that he was a sailmaker while he was in Ireland, but after arriving in America in the 1770s, he became a tailor. The McMullen family lore says that John McMullen was the tailor who made George Washington's uniform when he was elevated to commander of the Continental Army in 1776. This story was made public in a newspaper article in 1919. According to the article, a descendant of John McMullen owned a wooden tool chest that is said to be the box that McMullen kept his tools of the trade as a tailor. After the Revolutionary War, McMullen, who lived in Virginia and was married with children, eventually settled in Georgia on land that he received as a headright grant. Muster records from the Revolutionary War, place John at Valley Forge during the terrible winter of 1778. John is mentioned in George's Landmarks Memorials and Legends by Lucian Lamar Knight published in 1914 in the Hart County chapter. Studying genealogies compiled by other people, I have learned that John McMullen first married Theodosia Beasley sometime in the late 1760s and had by her five children, one of whom was my fourth great-grandfather, Patrick McMullen. It is not clear how the marriage between John and Theodosia ended. Yet, in more than one unsourced family history the story is told that Theodosia abandoned her family with John in favor of another man named William Dula. Most accounts agree, Theodosia was the daughter of James Beasley and Anne Reynolds. Her name is given as either Theodosia Beck Beasley or Theodosia Beasley. Her birth date is given as May 1755 or 1757. One story is that she first married John McMullen, an Irish immigrant around 1769 and had five children. They then separated and she married William Dula on April 5, 1790 in Wilkes Company, North Carolina. They had seven children. William died in 1835 and she followed nine years later. Another account I found gets really specific yet provides no sources. Theodosia was married, pregnant, at 14 to an older man John McMullen aged 29 having five children with him. Her father paid McMullen's and the children to move out of NC to Georgia so Theodosia could live with legally as a wife to Dula. She is, buried in Horton Family Cemetery in Caldwell Company NC USA. In light of evidence, I have found some details are in jeopardy, for example, it is not clear when this separation occurred. According to Virginia, Orange County Marriage Records, 1757 to 1938, Theodosia's son, Patrick was married to Sarah Walker on January 5, 1792 at Street Thomas Parish, Orange County, Virginia and Theodosia Beasley is on the record as his mother. In addition to my fourth great-grandfather, Theodosia's other children by John McMullen were James, Mary, John, and Catherine. Also, it appears that John McMullen remarried before leaving for Georgia. According to other unsourced family history records, John McMullen married a woman named Elizabeth Stowers in Orange County, Virginia and by her, 
He had 10 more children, three of whom were born in Virginia. Judging by the year his fourth child by Elizabeth was born, the family arrived in Georgia before 1799. Children of John and Elizabeth were Nail, Neil, Jeremiah, Lewis, Sinclair, Fielding, Thomas, Nancy, Elizabeth, Daniel, and Lavinia. To me, it does not seem likely that John would have been allowed to remarry if he were still legally married to Theodosia. It seems like there must have either been some legal proceeding to end the marriage or her death. I will warn up front, that like a 19th century novel there are characters in this story that bear the same names. Between the probate records for John and son Patrick, there are two Johns, two Patricks, and four Elizabeths. I will also warn you that like any 19th C. Southern planter, some of the property of the estate is human property. John McMullen died in December 1817 in Elbert County, Georgia. He left a last will and testament. I found the probate records for both John McMullen and for his son Patrick McMullen who died in 1836, also in Elbert County, Georgia. In the case of both records, my third great-grandfather, David Dobbs appears as either a witness or an administrator of the estate. David's other connection to the McMullen family is that he married a daughter of Patrick McMullen in 1819. John's will was read out in January 1818. This year was a part of time in American history known as the Era of Good Feelings, 1817 to 1825. In the aftermath of the War of 1812, the feel-good fever of American nationalism ran high while the country was being run by a virtual one-party system under the leadership of President James Monroe. When the president made his goodwill tours in 1817 and 1819, he donned a Revolutionary War officer's uniform and tied his long, powdered hair in a queue according to the old-fashioned style of the 18th century. Nostalgia for the days of revolution was the order of the day as many patriots and heroes of that time were dying off. At least five Dobbs males were named James Monroe, including my grandfather, a brother who died in infancy, their father, and an uncle who was born during the era of good feelings. Before this inquiry into the details of John and Patrick's estates, I knew only scant details about the family branch of my third great-grandmother Elizabeth McMullen Dobbs. She was born May 16, 1800 in Elbert County, Georgia, and she died before the Civil War on March 6, 1859 at Marietta, Georgia. The memorial on her tombstone at City Cemetery in Marietta reads as follows. Mrs. Elizabeth M. Dobbs, consort of Colonel David Dobbs, died Sunday, March 6, 1859, aged 58 years, 9 months, 21 days. In life, she was a devoted Christian, having been a member of the Baptist Church 38 years. I know that her sister, Frances McMullen, was married to David's brother, Asa Dobbs, and that they too, went to Cobb County in the 1830s. One of the challenges encountered when reviewing the records of both John and Patrick is the way in which the documents appear in the probate records, many items lack context and are not in chronological order. This is not so much an issue with John's probate records, which consists of 25 images, but as I got into the probate records for Patrick McMullen which consists of over 170 images, I was at once reminded of something out of a Charles Dickens novel, specifically Bleak House. Well, that's all the time we have for now. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button down below and be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Thank you for listening.